unprecedented gobsmacked unbelievable. Changes in Antarctica's sea ice could have dramatic impacts, says climate scientist Edward Doddridge. In 1898, the crew of the first scientific expedition to Antarctica became trapped inside sea ice around the southernmost continent. Much of that once thick ice is dwindling, says polar researcher Edward Doddridge. On August 16, 1989, sorry, 1897, the research vessel Belgica set sail from Antwerp, uh, Belgium, the ship's destination via Rio de Janeiro, Montevideo, and then Punta Arenas, Chile, was Antarctica, a continent that until that time remained completely unexplored by Westerners. The new land was not kind to its visitors. Shortly after its arrival, the Belgica became stuck in the thick halo of pack ice that surrounded the continent. As the Antarctica's dayless winter set in, the ship's 18-man crew were pushed to their mental and physical limits, consuming penguin and seal meat to survive. At least they had that. Uh, Frederick Cook, the Belgica's American physicist in 1898, wrote, We are as hopelessly isolated as if we were on the surface of Mars, and we are plunging still deeper and deeper into the white Antarctica silence. In the days of the faint sunlight and that came in the following spring, the ship's desperate, disease-ridden crew resorted to dropping sticks of dynamite around the vessel, blasting the thick ice, sea ice that enclosed them to create a narrow path to freedom. All but two of the crew survived the ordeal. But now, for large parts of the year, the once plentiful sea ice encountered by the ill-fated voyage seems to be disappearing. To discuss the expedition's history, the importance of Antarctica sea ice in regulating the global climate and the planetary implications of its growing absence, live science sat down with University of Tasmania oceanographer and climate scientist Edward Doddridge, who uses mathematical models and observations to understand the dynamics of the region. And this is what he had to say. Ben Turner, what was the voyage of the RV Belgica and how did it contribute to understanding of Antarctica? Dodger says the RV Belgica's voyage to Antarctica departed 1897 and was the first of what became known as the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. This was the very end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th. Antarctica was a completely unknown place that no one had been to. And then with just over a decade, people had gone all the way to the South Pole. Our scientific understanding of the region blossomed when we obtained the first records from the continent. It's still a continent that teaches us so much today, but the RV Belgica's voyage is the start. One of the reasons why you've written about Belgica and why its voyage is so famous is because the pack of ice there was so thick that the ship became stuck for nearly two winters what does this tell us about that part of the uh, part of how the Antarctic was like back then and how it's changed since? Ed says, "This is what I think that the RV Belgica's voyage is such an interesting one to look at now. The region of the Antarctic coastline uh, they sailed to has been since ice-free for the first time since satellite records began. It now does not have any ice for months and months of the year." It's pretty surprising in a 45-year record, but when you look back at 125 years ago, you see that they were trapped in the ice that was 6.6 .6 feet thick, and that's a huge change. It's a really sh a startling story because it's a nugget that we can use to understand how it's changed over the last century. If you were to go down there this summer in a boat like the Belgica, you could sail all the way to the Antarctic coastline frolic around on the Atlantic, our Antarctic shore, and then sail back to Belgium, and you might not have seen any expansive sea ice. Uh, BT, bringing this closer to the present, in 2023, after several years of record lows, the sea ice over the Antarctic winter period failing to regrow, but the end, by the end of the Antarctic winter in July, the continent was missing a region of ice bigger than Western Europe. You're a polar researcher, you studied this for a long time. 
what were your thoughts when this happened last year? And ED says, almost disbelief. The measurements that we got for Antarctic sea ice are extremely well calibrated. We know that the satellite is truthfully telling us how much ice there is, but looking at that graph, it was hard to comprehend that it could be so different from previous years. As a research community, we struggle to even describe how unusual the change is. People throw around words like unprecedented, gobsmacked, or unbelievable. For a while, we were trying to use statistics to say that it was one in many thousands or millions of years event. Then we got into billions and even into tens of billions of years event. At some point along the way, we just have to realize that the statistics are not useful to understanding this anymore. It's so far outside that we've been sent, we've seen it in the last 45 years, that we just have to say that it's completely different. That's, a good, that's as good as you can do. The difference now is that the Arctic is um, an ocean surrounded by continents, whereas the Antarctic is a continent surrounded by ocean. So in the Arctic, the amount of ice that you have in the winter is basically just the amount of ice that you have, but you're never going to run out of ocean around Antarctica. So when sea ice forms around Antarctica, it can expand a long way, and the limit of this expansion is set by the interaction between the ocean, the atmosphere, and the ice. This means the ocean currents around Antarctica are crucial for how much ice you can have. All of this makes it really difficult to model. In the past, the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, models suggested that we should be losing ice in the Antarctic, just like we are in the Arctic, but we did not see that in the satellite data up to 2014. So last year, when it did not come back during the winter, it was something that we had not predicted. We had the sense that climate change meant we will get less ice at some point in the future, but if you had asked climate scientists in 2020 what's going to happen to the winter of 2023, no one could have predicted what we saw. Fundamentally, it has to be that the world is getting warmer, and we know that a warmer world is not consistent with lots of sea ice. As the atmosphere and ocean warm, they're both going to affect the sea ice. But understanding all of the nuances of those interactions is really quite tricky. There's a layer at the top of the ocean called the mixed layer, it has the same properties at any given location. It does not really change the temperature or saltiness. And around Antarctica, that layer is almost about 330 feet thick during winter. Below that is where warmer warmth comes from the other parts of the oceans and mixes up with the top layer where it can inhabit sea ice. We've shown in our research that those subsurface temperatures, ocean temperatures, have been increasing and the places where they've warmed the most, we see the greatest reductions in sea ice. We cannot conclusively rule out that just under multi-decadal or centennial variations in the sea ice, we can do that though, as we can, we, we can look at the 45 years of data that we have. This suggests that if there is some kind of change or freak event, it does not happen in a 45 ti year time frame. The other thing that we do is we can use models and run them over thousands of years. Again, there's no indication that something like 2023 regularly happens at random in these models. Now, changes in the sea ice are definitely going to impact AMOC. That's the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the Gulf Stream. And this water that forms up in the North Atlantic gets cold and salty. It sinks down and then it comes back up in Antarctica. And there's another loop that the, that circulation for the cold, dense water that forms around Antarctica. And that formation of what we call Antarctic bottom water, the densest in the global ocean, is really dependent on sea ice formation. When glaciers and ice sheets in Antarctica melt, they release fresh water into the ocean and reduce the salt in the surface waters. This means it can't get as dense and sink as easily, reducing the rate of the circulation. There's been a couple of papers that have suggested that Amok has slowed down by 30% in the last few decades, and that there could be up to a 50% decrease in the coming years. 
So absolutely, changes in sea ice around Antarctica will change the global overturning circulation and the distribution of heat, salt, and nutrients that it carries with it. And this is on uh, Live Science by Ben Turner. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. My Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.